Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is um, basically how to troubleshoot a few different things, uh, different techniques that I use for bug testing and stuff like that. Uh, they're pretty accurate when I actually make the mods and stuff like that for the projects that I do the tutorials. Uh, there's a few different methods that we'll actually go through today. There is uh, at least three or four. So uh, the first one what we're actually going to be covering is the actual errors in game. So if something happens in game or with um, the workspace, it will basically come up in console. Now, in order to actually demonstrate that, obviously this is a brand new, well, sort of brand new um, thing. I think there's just a few different things on here. Uh, I use this one for testing and stuff like that, but um, there's absolutely no errors or anything like that because we have no content. So we're going to create a simple procedure and I'm going to basically create a condition that will um, cause an error in game when we actually run it. So whoop, that will kind of be a problem if I don't give it a name. So we're just going to call this uh, error or I'm not sure if we can do error. We might be able to do error. And uh, then what we're going to do is we're just going to run it when we right click. So we'll right click on, uh, let's see here, right click on block. Uh, that should be good enough. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and, I don't know, we'll set a condition to test if I figure we'll just call it give it a string so we'll give a random local variable a string um, <clears throat> so we'll call it I don't know message and then we'll go ahead and set the string to that. Uh, the reason why we're setting it to string because we're going to be working with a block called substring. And if this isn't actually programmed properly, uh, what happens is it basically comes up with an error if the character count is over the amount for the position and stuff like that. So what we want to do is we actually we probably don't even need the if, or if statement. We just need to set the variable uh, for this, we're just going to set um, one, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just print that out to the player when they right click on a block. Uh, but what we need to do is set the position to something higher. Now, this will cause a error in game. Uh, this is the only actual error that I am aware of that can actually cause issues in game. Uh, sometimes with compiling errors, there will be something wrong with the procedure system or a element and it will come up in console, but it will basically do the exact same thing when it's listing the, the issue for a procedure. So uh, once we do that, what we need to do is grab a couple number variables. Now the value here, uh, because there's only one character, it's a zero to one. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one to two and that should cause the error to happen now this will actually run and compile fine which is actually very misleading but uh, obviously you can't test for the range and under like know that it's an issue until it's actually tested in game so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just uh, save that and it should compile fine there should be no uh, compiling errors at the moment at least so we'll just wait for this to compile and once it's finished compiling then we'll hop in game and then we'll uh, right click a block and basically get the error and then we can take it from there so as you can see it says build successful so everything ran fine uh, we can go and start up the test environment and I'll cut back in when we're actually in there all right, so we're officially in game. I'm just going to right click on any block and maybe it's punch. Nope, that didn't work either. Uh, this trick used to work. I'm not sure why it's not working. Might be pushing out a error. Yep. Yeah. so we got a couple errors in the um, 
things. So if we were to right click, you can see that there's errors coming up in the console here. So again, if you want to see the console, you just click on the console icon right over here and it will basically list that. So we can see that I basically just went and paused the game. So that's basically what it's doing there. And if we right click again and then pause and go back to the console, uh, as you can see, this is where we paused and this is our error right here. So uh, with that being said, uh, we can actually get some information about this particular error. So we can look at these little yellow text and basically what these uh, are are links to code are like code in the um, the game and stuff like that. What you want to look for is something named your procedure. So we have a procedure called error and what we need to find is something obviously called error. Now this is a procedure right here called error procedure and then it says dot java 33. So from what I understand, uh, 33 might be the line of code, um, possibly. I'm not sure if it is. Now, generally, if you double click on it, it would basically open it, but it um, doesn't seem to be doing that right now. Um, yeah, they might have taken that feature out. I'm not sure. We'll stop the game and we'll try right clicking on it, see if that helps. If not, then what you'll have to do is you'll have to kind of just uh, browse the the thing. So let's go down here. We'll see if we can't click on that procedure again. Okay, so it's not going to be clicking on it before. What you could do is you could right click on it and it would basically open up the procedure. Uh, some of these aren't opening for some reason. I'm not sure if that's um, on M Creator's end or not. But before, what you could do is you could open it. But if you see the procedure here, it will basically uh, say the um, the error of the procedure, and you can kind of get a general idea of where it um, uh, the error itself. So again, right here it says a uh, string index output bounds exception. So basically, what that means is um, it's not in the right order. Uh, begin one and two length one so basically the length is one so the maximum uh, character count is one and we're trying to test for two that's basically all it's trying to say in that particular thing um, a lot of these errors will be a little bit confusing um, I'm not sure why they took away the support for clicking on the links before that was possible um, now, I am kind of curious now, if we lock this and we open it, would that be, what line did it say it was? It said it was on line 20 and 33. So, I'm just going to check to see if there's any other things in here. So, line 20 and 33. So, if we go back to here. 20 is this one right here, so event slash uh, target player. So we know that um, this would probably be the part that says, um, pretty sure that's the one that prints out to the player. Maybe not, maybe that's the message down here. Yeah, this is the message. So this would basically be the line 20 and then 33 would be this line right here which is the print message part so <clears throat> what it's basically saying is line 33 this line right here is basically causing an issue so we know that this would be basically the um, part that actually prints out because if we were to go back into our um, procedure editor so if we were just to close that so unlock it and then right click on it we can kind of see how our structure is set up for our procedure now we have the variable here that will probably be somewhere around the 20th line so local variable i'm not sure how that's actually formatted i don't know javascript or not javascript java so i'm just kind of guessing for how things are structured but we know that this is the right click event so that's probably has to do with the trigger itself 
and then we're executing an entity. So most likely this has to do with the actual trigger itself. So it's probably saying, hey, this is this trigger's not working. And then it's pointing to line 33 in the error log. So basically the error log, which I just happened to take away from compiling it, is basically saying that we're testing for uh, line one and line two. And if we look at our procedure, that's line one and line two here. So in general, um, these logs for the uh, systems here, for the how the things are formatted will be basically in line of how your procedure is formatted. So if you had a whole bunch of if statements between the two uh, like this and you have other stuff between here, it's going to be in the same relevant area for the procedure like in the, the procedure itself here than it is in how it's formatted here. So it'll be just kind of reading it like a list of things, same idea as if you were reading it from here. <clears throat> Now, obviously, that might not be the case in some issues. Sometimes you might just get a compiling error. It might just say, hey, something's not working in here. And it'll say, hey, uh, yeah, this isn't working. Uh, what you can do is if you go over onto the top panel uh, right down here uh, by next or just above the console, and then there is a button that says regenerate code, uh, you can click that one. And what it will do is it will basically regenerate, try to get rid of any errors and stuff like that. Uh, if this still doesn't work, uh, most likely there will be a couple blocks or like elements of some sort that are particularly not compiling properly. In some cases, this happens when you update a procedure and the dependencies change or something like that. Uh, maybe it supports entities, but... Um, like for example, you might have a right-click event, but you don't use an entity uh, entity dependency uh, for a block or something like that, and then you update it to add it, and then the block might say, hey, yeah, I can't compile properly after trying to regenerate it. Um, if it still doesn't do that, what you can do is you can go to your main folder, and you can go filter, and then elements with errors, and then it will show up in this list. Um, now, don't do this in subfolders because it won't show all your workspace. But uh, if you do it in your main root folder, then it will actually show that. So once you do that, though, uh, what you need to do is you need to actually go into the actual element that's causing the issue. And then you just basically need to click save. And then it will basically fix that particular element. For some reason, um, it will need to be regenerated through that method. Uh, the regeneration for the little button here somehow doesn't fix that with that particular issue. Uh, most likely this has to do with something to do within the actual code for the element itself. So once you do it through the element and actually saving, it just kind of fixes the code that it needs to actually support so basically it probably is missing code that it needed in order to actually work properly so with that being said uh, there is a few other techniques that you can do uh, the build um, build button will basically just recompile it so it runs the script here we're regenerating will basically um, try to make sure that all your mod elements and stuff are um, and your mod assets are in proper order and stuff like that. It's a very useful tool. This will generally fix most things. Uh, if that still doesn't work though, uh, there are some actual build tools up here that you can try using. Uh, you can try using the regenerate Gradle project or the clear all Gradle caches. Now if all else fails, you can regenerate or clear the Gradle caches. There's also uh, clear entire Gradle folder and these two options can basically be a fallback if the method that I explained previously with saving the mod element doesn't work. Now I have used this in a couple times. Sometimes it fixes it, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, this usually has to do with a Gradle error itself. Uh, so if something is terribly going wrong, like if the workspace is corrupt or something like that and something's not ticking properly, sometimes this can help. Uh, with that particular problem. Uh, the other one, which is Reload Gradle Project, will just kind of re reload the assets and stuff like that. You can also get the 
I'll regenerate and build up here. You can also clean the build files, which will basically just uh, clean up everything. So there's a few different options. So you can try all those different things up there if you want. Uh, again, most of these things are probably just really in uh, severe cases. In most cases, I've only needed to use the regenerate and actually go into the mod element and click on the mod element itself and then save it. And in 99% of the time, it will fix the issue. So with that being said, hopefully today's video was useful for you guys. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.